Hello and welcome back! If you follow the channel, you know that we ran into a snag while trying to repair our complicated HP 9825 memory controller. In order to go further, we needed more understanding of what it does and I decided to simulate it. Transcribing it to Verilog seemed error prone and definitely not fun, so I looked for a graphical way to enter and simulate the schematics. That's when I chanced upon Logisim Evolution, and I liked it so much that I thought I would give you a little intro. Most of the introduction videos I found were painfully slow and way too basic. I fell asleep in the middle before I even learned anything. So for a common good, I decided to make this short tutorial introduction. So not to worry, we won't go through this whole complicated schematics, but I'll give you enough to get you started that you could do it if you wanted to. So here's the Logisim Evolution, and uh, you actually want to use the, the latest, uh, not the latest release, but the la latest beta, because the, the release was full of bugs. They, they corrected most of the ones I found very quickly, though. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit intimidating, you don't know where to start and what you have to start with is a clock. So we're going to do the Hello World version of Logisim. Here's a clock uh, and then you have to go into Input Output, grab an LED. There we go and we're going to put a wire between the clock and LED and try to make it blink. So you go to Simulate and there you go, we have our blinking LED. Of course we want to do some basic logic with it, so let's uh, remove that wire and do put an AND gate, uh, put the gate here, drop our LED. Here what we want to add is a pin, here's a pin. And now it's a zero. And what you want to do to change it, you want to take the finger here and you want to poke it. So I'm going to poke it. And now it's the end of the clock and the one, so it blinks. And if I poke it again, it turns into a zero. So that's, that's how you interact with things and change their levels. Uh, that's one of the ways. Uh, but the, the first thing I had to do and I was confused is, okay, I need to build something. I need to first generate some signals. Uh, and all I had as an input was the clock. So uh, that's the first thing I did was a signal generator. That's probably the first thing that you'll need to. And uh, it's an interesting circuit. So I'm just going to build it for you. So first I needed a counter, which and intuitively is in the memory section. Uh, counter, there we go. And we're going to put a counter right here next to our clock. Uh, we're almost correct, it's about here. So another thing is that if you, if you hover over the pins, it tells you what the pin does. So this is a clock. So I'm just going to connect my clock. And here you go, it's starting to count. Um, I want it to count to 16, so I'm going to drop over here and do F. Um, and it's already past 16, so I need to reset it. Give it a good reset. Book zero, there we go. And now it's going to count up to 16. Uh, but it's in binary here. That's not very nice to uh, look at. So let's let's have uh, an, an LED output, and you do it exactly as you would do in with TTL. Uh, you look at uh, binary to BCD block, uh, which is you no know, a chip that you would get in TTL and is going to break it into the hundreds, the tens and the units. But here you see it complains because uh, my BCD wants three numbers, so it wants nine bits and I have only eight. So I'm going to put that to eight. Now it's happy. So I can't still see anything over here uh, because I need to drive a seven segment. But fortunately right next to it there's a BCD to seven segment thingy which is also, then that would be a 7447 uh, chip. 
and I'm going to put three of those on my three digits, although I really need two digits. And oops, and they're connected. I still can't see anything because I have to connect my uh, 7447 to some LEDs, and here they are. And actually, I was wondering how many things I would have to draw. I have to draw nothing because it fits right in. So this is obviously made for it. And here we go, we are counting. So let's uh, make some interesting signals out of this. Uh, so here we are going to go to, uh, we need a comparator. What would that be? Arithmetic. Comparator. Here we have one. So we are going to compare our Ooh, not that. Our input to to close over here, and we are going going to compare it to zero. So I will this time use a little constant as an input. Here we go. This one. And again, it complains because this is a binary constant. I need eight bits here. So I'm going to go down here, put it at eight bits and put it at zero. And that thing is going to give us a nice signal when we go to zero. Here we have it, put a little LED. So when it doesn't come in the right orientation, you have to right click and rotate it so that the pin is at the bottom. Donk. So our LED should light up when it's zero. There you go, it did. Uh, and also let's view the signal on a scope. Uh, where is the scope? Input, output, extended, there it goes. There is my scope. Um, I think I'll put it a little higher. So we'll put it on the scope. Um, and the scope needs to be triggered by something and we'll use the clock, but it's inconvenient to wire it from over here to, to over there. So we'll do a tunnel, which is all the way at the top tunnel. So we'll put it here and we'll rotate it uh, once is enough and we'll call it the clock. Here we go. And uh, this one we're going to actually copy and paste it, rotate. Uh, actually, I want a little bit more space out here. So I'm going to move this over here. Put my clock. And here we have my scope working and it's going to give us this and actually I'm uh, going to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put a buzzer over here, rotate, 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 and I'm actually going to change the tone to something I like, grab another constant, put it here, wire it up, and, and this pin is the frequency pin, uh, and it wants 8, uh, where am I, this one, it wants 14 bits, my goodness, um, and we want it at 533. And now to uh, generate my all other signals, uh, first I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, number of states, we want like 20 states. Okay, so now it's counting, it's giving me a signal. Uh, and let's say I would like to uh, have a signal from step two to step 10. So I'm going to copy this thing, replicate it once, Replicate it twice, connect it, 
connect it and this we are going to make two and this we are going to make ten so this is a in hexadecimal and, but it's not going to do exactly what we want it's going to give us our equal signal Uh, there you go, we got the 2, the, the, the 0, the 2, and the 10. 0, 2, and 10. But what we want is really a signal that goes from 2 to 10. So uh, what we need to do is like exactly what we would do if we were designing a real circuit. We need a flip-flop. So we need a JK flip-flop, which is right here. And... Here it goes. Woohoo, I aligned it perfect. Dump. JK flip flop. And it needs to be triggered by our clock. So, so you're actually designing as exactly as you would uh, making a real circuit. Okay, so here's our JK flip flop. And now. It's going to trigger our signals from step 2 to step 10. So the J is the set and the K is the reset. So it gets the pulse at step 2 to set it to 1 and gets the pulse at step uh, 10 to set it to 0 and actually tells you here if it's a 1 or a 0. So uh, pretty cool and uh, actually you are going to replicate this thing. Let's say I want a second one of these let's do this one let's have it start a little later uh, let's do 5 to 10 and did it catch it yeah so now I have my test signal that once starts from 2 to 10, let's say that's my row signal, and this is my column signal for 5 to 10. Then you, uh, we, we, can, we can play a little bit more here. We can make it musical. 533, here we go. And then 1066. All right, and see if that works. nice uh, musical signal generator uh, but but you get the idea you you just build your circuit visually and it's uh, tremendous it re works really well well we'll dive into the full simulation in the next episode of the HP9825 series but needless to say I was able to understand what the convoluted circuit did which would have been nearly impossible without this wonderful tool and if you want, you can even generate very log of your logic and upload it in an FPGA. So here it is folks, a Logisim Evolution. And for a free tool that is a work of love, originally intended to teach logic design, it is nothing short of amazing. I'm sure we'll put it to good use in the next episodes. See you soon!